You have questions, we have answers. This is Jay Muller. And this is Ken Muller. Welcome to our show, all about real estate with Ken and Jane. So this past Wednesday, the Fed uh, reduced the rate by half a percentage point. So we've got a lot of things to update everyone, our listeners, about the market. And we have with us as our guest today, Joe Urcioli of Crown Home Mortgage. Joe, welcome to our show. Oh, thank you, Kane and Jen. Welcome uh, back to our show, I should say. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. right. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it uh, giving me the opportunity to talk. You well, know, well, this is a right time words. because we have a lot of, I think, encouraging news about the Fed's uh, drop and, and the housing market and the mortgage rates go hand in hand. Um, so we're going to talk about all that. But before we get started, just tell us briefly about yourself and the uh, services Crown Home Mortgage provides. Yeah. So uh, we are a correspondent lender here in New Jersey. We specialize in um, home mortgages, one through four family homes, condominiums, townhouses. Uh, we do a little bit of mixed use properties as well. Um, we have a vast uh, array of programs going from your conventional products to your first time home buyer FHA product. Um, we do a lot of VA loans to help the veterans as well. Um, so uh, I'm personally licensed here in New Jersey, but we have an interstate lending group as well um, that we could do all across the country. Oh, fantastic. Great, great. All right. So a few days ago, this past Wednesday, there was some big, big news by the Fed, right? Yes. I think they weren't sure if it was going to be a half a point or a quarter point. It turned out to be a half a point. I guess the vote was not unanimous. There was one one person on the on the committee that voted only to lower it a quarter, but it is what it is. So it's a half a point. Um, so the first thing I was reading, um, some analysts are saying that the lenders may have already factored this rate cut into their into their uh, portfolio for uh, their rates. Do you think that's the that's case? That's correct. That 100% is correct. correct. Yeah. Most so. lenders across the board factored it in over the past month or so, um, where the rates went from seven on a 30 year fixed to maybe 6% over the past four to five weeks. Um, that was because they were getting ready for this um, reduction with the Fed fund rate. Because so. what they don't want to do is they don't want it to drop overnight and have that book of business locked in and then they drop it by a half a percent because mm -hmm. um, lenders across the board, there was a, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes with that when that happens. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they trickle it over the course of months. Um, so I was quite yeah. surprised, uh, Joe, because uh, I, I mean, I could be definitely wrong here, but I thought the uh, market anticipated a quarter because I was shocked at the uh, bold move by the Fed. First of all, I personally think they should uh, re reduce the earlier. I mean, they would talk about reducing March. It didn't happen. But at least in July, they would definitely save the uh, um, summer market because this summer is really slow. Very so because nobody knows they're going to reduce, not going to reduce what they're going to do. But uh, I was shocked by how person. I know even a lot of the talk before the announcement. But uh, I feel if they dropped a quarter percent, definitely price the in because last uh, two three weeks you can see the rate drop so much. But half percent, perhaps I'm hoping here. I, I mean, I'm praying there may be more drop in the interest rate for the uh, buyers. Yeah. So because they dropped a half well, rather than a quarter. Well, the Fed is saying they're insinuating that it could the rates could drop by a further. Or two percent by the end of 2025, which does that's a tremendous amount of of yeah. uh, drop that's, still built in, and maybe another another drop uh, by the end of this year. Before the end of the year, this year. which yeah. would help tremendously. So, I mean, that's that's a lot. I mean, because yeah. there was never any indication in the prior Fed meetings, they were very cautious and just said, "Well, we're going to wait and see and look at the data, look at the data, and see how inflation is doing." But I guess they were encouraged that inflation is coming close to that. Yeah. Two percent getting better. Yep, getting better. Um, I, I think it's not only inflation, right, Ken? It's the uh, the uh, employment market, right? Third, mm. third, you know, correction. That's huge. Can you imagine? Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, three percent. I understand. It's almost, uh, you know, thirty percent or something. That's that's really. Uh, I mean, that's huge. Yeah. So that's like maybe that forced the uh, uh, Fed to relook at the whole picture. Yeah. You know, because they were. They didn't drop in July or earlier mm -hmm. because the uh, data, right? If, if somehow the data doesn't matter what happened, how it happened, it, it is wrong, and they have to react according to the revised of data. Of course, that's why they always so, say. So, yeah, know. that that's. Yeah. I mean, that's why the half percent. Is just to, yeah. just to put so, it in perspective, right yeah. now your thirty-year fixed, 
is sitting right around that 6%, 6.15. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In in um, early May, mm-hmm. you were at seven and a quarter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. last October, we were at 7.8. Yeah. Yeah. So, very high. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Last year. So it's almost two points in the yeah, last year. Yeah. So that's a big, it's huge. and that's a huge, I think we discussed on previous shows that every, if you drop two points, the month, it's all about the monthly payments when yes. you're buying a right. house. That's what yeah. people care about. So that's a huge, so that could be a good sign for the economy because if they can reduce the monthly payment, that can help them afford the car lease and use that money. And, it, and it's like a win-win right. for the whole st- yep. stimulus yeah. of the economy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. That's good news. So it was a positive yeah. outlook yesterday. Yeah, that was that was great. I yeah. know it's the federal fund rate, and I know yeah. that's the rate that the banks lend amongst each other overnight, yeah. mm-hmm. and and it doesn't have a direct correlation to interest rates, yes. mortgage interest rates, mm-hmm. but it does have a a, a contributing factor. Yes. Right. So how do you see rates? I mean, nobody has a crystal ball, but I mean, if the Fed is going to might lower the rate again one more time, how do you see the interest rates for the consumer? Uh, panning out because now we're in, uh, we're almost through September. So in the next three months, I mean, you guys see that the lenders are going to maybe carve in a little more reduction or they, or they think it's kind of, it's hard to s- It's hard to say. Uh, I, I, I do have a lot of industry experts that I listen to mm-hmm. and they're saying right now, let your pipeline float because the rates might trickle down even a little bit more. So I'm, I'm hoping and, and throw in the fact that you have, um, the presidential election mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, election doesn't, same thing, doesn't have a direct impact on rates, but it always seems to every four years when we have an election that it does help the interest rates a little bit. So mm. I'm thinking that if we can get these rates into maybe like the low to mid fives mm. over the next couple wow. of months, I think that would be huge. That's a win win. Yeah. 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 I just think like traditionally, get- I mean, traditionally, Ken, uh, the winter, the read, you know, the supply and demand. Winter and the uh, read seems a little bit better. In spring, the demand pick it up, the read go up. So that's why uh, we just had a half per point reduction, possibly another one cut at the end of the year. And then it's the election and then it's the winter. So I think uh, for the buyer, looking good here, yeah, right? Yeah, maybe this winter will be Yeah, a, they'll, be, be, they'll nice. be good. Yeah, yeah, they'll be a good, good, you know, as Ken said, that's a huge impact on the uh, affordability. You know, Absolutely. it's a mm-hmm. huge, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that's Two really. Points is huge probably on a, on a mm-hmm. $300,000, $400,000 loan. We don't have the figure, it's but, just but to, it's just. Just to give it, you an example, uh, yeah. on, a, on a refinance I'm doing for a customer right now, mm-hmm. I'm saving her $250 a month. She was mm-hmm. at like seven and a half and I'm mm-hmm. doing her at 5.99 yeah. right now. It's huge. Huge. Yeah. $250 yeah. per I, month on the mortgage Joe, is a huge Joe, did you give drop. your phone number? I don't think in your intro. <laughs> yeah. Did you give your phone number in case I, I anybody. Didn't, I, I didn't. I, that's yeah. So please go ahead. Yeah, we'll, we'll so uh, uh, it's a 908 <sighs> 307-2374. Again, it's Joe Ursioli. I'm from Crown Home Mortgage. Okay, and great. if you guys are listening, uh, if you want to refinance, call Joe, get a quote. Yeah, or, or mortgage. <laughs> or, or and purchase. We have to yeah, say from yeah. personal experience, Joe is always available even on Friday nights, Saturdays. He'll he'll get back to you. He may not text you right away if he's out to dinner with his wife and kids, but he will very respond rare, to very you. Rare. But he's, yeah, he's very hardworking <laughs> and very try. responsive and responsible and he knows yeah. his stuff. So Yeah, he yeah. always respond yeah. even yeah. though he on the soccer um, field and he always um, get yeah, back to us yeah. yes Much yes appreciate it. yes I yes appreciate yeah it. yeah yeah, so that's that's really good stuff, and I think the housing market there, the supply, the inventory is increasing too. So that means there's more opportunity for the buyers, for Correct. more buyers out there to, to find a home. And, exactly, and, they're not so. stepping over each other right now. If 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 yeah. inventory grows a little bit, that's going to help, mm-hmm. along with the interest rates coming down a little bit. It's uh, it's huge opportunity. Right. I think uh, furthermore, it's like uh, last two years inventory is so tight. Yeah. Uh, partially, is a lot of people. They had a 2.5% or 3%. And uh, if they want to trade up, and then they have to pay more interest to give up what I have and a very low inventory. So those people didn't want to uh, uh, sell. So now there'll be a good opportunity for them because if they can get uh, five or even high four, they'll be really, no, they'll be win-win, you know. So so that will create more uh, liquidity. In the market, I wouldn't say more availability because if these people trade up, it's like a one against one is equal, right? So cross it out. So I would think a le- liquidity in the market in, in terms of inventory that would be a great help too. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm finding families are growing, and uh, the ones that are selling now just need a bigger home. 
Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is. They need a bigger home um, right now. So, like I said, the more opportunity would be out there if we have more inventory. So mm -hmm. yeah. And inventory. also a lot of people in the past, they may think uh, like add-on. But now because inflation, the um, the material and the labor cost, so maybe it's more make financial sense and uh, to just buy one rather than just uh, to uh, renovate or do the extension. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. And with the way the home prices in Central Jersey have gone up, I mean, the in, that's a big, big factor with the yeah. reduction, uh, the interest rate deduction, because it can, because I mean, it, it's a, just a huge savings to the monthly savings to the, yeah. to the buyers. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, a lot of people during the COVID last four years, they mm -hmm. bought a house quick. They have to fight, no time to think. Correct. And uh, buy remorse, right? Yeah. Now they, they have a more cool head so they can think about it. The interest rate is more uh, affordable and the liquidity of inventory is available, more to ho home to choose from. Maybe it's a time for them to... Uh, Hundred percent to buy another yeah. house. That was, a, that was yeah. a fast paced uh, COVID era. Um, mm -hmm. People were mm -hmm. acting fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So there's a lot of moving part at the a moment. Lot. A lot a of lot. opportunity uh, for the seller, for the buyer, for the mortgage company, for the real estate agent. So that's a win-win-win-win mm. situation. Have you seen? Are you, have you seen your uh, phone start ringing uh, more, so. more so now in the last few weeks with the anticipation? Because we we all realized that the summer was slow. The inventory was Very down. Slow. You yeah. were saying before this show started that the summer. I mean, it wasn't just as much business being written because of the rates, understandably being Correct. as high as they are. But are you seeing that loosen? up a little and absolutely yeah in so, the summer months and, literally end of okay. june um up until the weekend of labor day mm. it was it was very slow because everybody goes away you have buyers going away you have agent real estate agents mm -hmm. going away you have loan officers going away it was it was very slow once the kids got back into school mm. my phone started ringing labor day weekend mm. um i was at a barbecue and of course was ringing <laughs> and i have to work and um since then, sure. it's it's been nonstop. So businesses good. have been very good since Labor Day weekend. I think oh. the rate is slight that has been going down since the Labor Day weekend too. 100%, so that's yeah. really helped because during the summer the rate is really high. With the talking about the rate cut from last year December, so never cut it. So but the rate already reflect that when it didn't happen, they went back up. Yes. So that's why it's a ho holiday, why a lot of real estate agents go holiday, because no business. What are they going to do in the house, right? right. They're going. So that's, that's right. really, was was really a terrible uh, summer this time, from June to the end of August. Like June 15th, suddenly the whole world stopped. Yes. My phone just doesn't ring. I have to check a few times. Is the phone working, yes. right? Mm -hmm. But now it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, and, um, and I'm still finding that nobody could take that vacation during the COVID era. Mm. So people are doing it now. So as soon as that weather warmed up and the mm. kids were out of school, everybody boy, took off. And boy, did it warm up. And yeah. it warmed up and we go back to July. Yeah. yeah. All right, very good. Why don't we take a short break? We'll be right back after these messages. Okay, welcome back to our show. We're joined today with uh, Joe Urcioli of Crown Home Mortgage. And Joe, once again, please give your contact uh, phone number. Yeah, absolutely. It's 908 uh, 307 Two three seven four. That's my direct cell number. You could either call, text, or shoot me an email at uh, J U R C I U O L I at Crown H M dot com. All right. Now Fantastic. we're going to test if you know how to spell the last name with oh, all no. the syllables. That's <laughs> no. kind of I like you I, in I there. have a Urchioli. <laughs> I mean, that's a tongue twister. Urchioli. Urchioli. <laughs> I still can't. Um, so now we spoke about all the good news with eight, with interest rates going down and, and there's a downward trend. So a lot of buyers, a lot of people out there might be listening and thinking, gee, I'm a renter now. Um, the rates are low. I always hear talk about like, gee, why don't, why, why not buy when you, instead of renting with the, if the numbers work out the monthly payments. So so roughly, what does it take? Um, and again, this is all general advice, and every case is is case is specific to the person. But what does it take for somebody to qualify for a mortgage in terms of how many years employment you need, and you know what kind of credit score, and yeah, you know just the absolutely. nuts yeah. and bolts? So um, credit score. Um, well, I'll, I'll start with it's literally three pieces of a puzzle. It's mm -hmm. it's credit, job and income, and assets. You need all three. 
You definitely need all three. So we go down to a 580 score. We don't love the 580 score, but mm-hmm. we will go down to a 580 score. Um, the higher the credit score, the better the interest rate. Mm-hmm. Second piece is the job and income. We want to make sure that you have a job for the ability to repay the loan back. That's very crucial. It's very important. Um, you could have fixed income. You can have pension. You can have Social Security. Mm-hmm. And then the last piece is the uh, are the assets. Uh, assets are important because you can get in uh, to a single family home with as little as 3% down. Um, mm-hmm. Most folks like to put down 5% or more. Um, obviously, if you put 20% down, um, you get even a better rate and there's no mortgage insurance. Um, so, yeah, those are the three components to getting the mortgage. Um, like I said, you have to have all three. Some people will call me that are currently renting. You mentioned renters, mm-hmm. and I love that. I love okay. renters because let's you, you don't want to have, have to pay somebody else's mortgage. Mm-hmm. So they'll call me up. We'll go over the three pieces of the puzzle. I, I talk to them. Um, I always kid around with them and say, by the time I'm done with this, it's usually about a 42-minute uh, first-time home buyer call mm-hmm. that you'll know more information than real estate agents. I always <laughs> oh, kid that's around. Right. I always <laughs> kid around. That's so, um, mm-hmm. But renters can yeah. definitely do it. Most renters think they can't do it. But if they have decent credit, a job, and some assets – they can definitely do yeah. it. Now, do they need the job for a particular length of time, like a two years, or is there any is there any criteria? Or if they have a good job, let's say out of college and they're making, let's say, six figures or, or a decent income, can they qualify for, for a mortgage based on like a year or less of employment history? So if or, they're right out of college and their degree is associated somewhat with the job that they have in hand right now, we could use that history of, in college with the college degree mm-hmm. with their current salary. So yes, they don't have to be on the job for two years. So let's say they were in college for four years. They got a degree in um, social worker, uh, social work, and uh, they are currently now on their job for one year as a social worker. We could use their current salary, and then we'll use the history of the uh, of this the college. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is which is a huge plus, and most most people don't realize that. We do like a two year work history. Mm-hmm. We do, but you could switch jobs as long as when you switch jobs, you're not downgrading to a, a lower salary. Because if you do, then we have to qualify you based on a lower salary. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, if you're already pre approved, that pre approval might change now. Right. Yeah. For yeah. the listening, <clears throat> for the listener out there, if you are on some special uh, occupation like the police force or um, VA or a doctor medical or a medical professional. And teachers. They, they always have, and the teachers, sorry. Yes. They they have a very special program. Yes. And talk to Joe, talk to your lender, talk, you know, to, to get case by case. We just talk in general here, but you do have to, before you're thinking about buying, you need the professional advice. So you know what you can afford, uh, and then you can find a home accordingly. And another uh, experience that I had is a lot of time, right? When people have uh, overtime or bonuses, right? Even though you got the money, but you still have to talk to uh, Joe, like a loan officer to go through your uh, financials, okay, to make sure that's accounted because how many times uh, down to the wire, they couldn't close Why they're waiting for this year's bonus, because they can't, you know, That's so you have to mm-hmm. talk to loan officer up front. You have to give all your financial paperwork. And uh, so in that case, you don't have a last minute to crunch, right? So do your yeah. homework. Just that's basically, yeah. I, uh, I couldn't agree with you more, Jane. And I appreciate you bringing that up because I, I always like to give real life examples. This just happened yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. Pre-approval with a borrower. Mm-hmm. And he makes a ton of overtime he started his job in September of 22. In order to use overtime, you have to take a two-year average. Mm-hmm. So I asked him for his last pay stub in 22, mm-hmm. last pay stub in 23, and his year-to-date pay stub. This way I could take the two-year average. Mm-hmm. He made so much in overtime, but this year, year-to-date, it was gradually going down. Okay. And when I asked him why it's going down compared to the previous year, mm-hmm. he told me that they basically cut it out and mm-hmm. they no longer offer overtime. 
Uh, which means I can I can't even use that as income. Yes. Oh, uh, because you know that you have that knowledge, so you can't you Correct. can no longer take the two year average because you know that it's eliminated. So in it's fairness, eliminated. so lender you can't you have to Correct. discount it completely. Correct. Now yeah. that's the difference it, between qualifying them on X as opposed to Y. Yes. So I could have easily counted that. And I would have found out while it's in processing when we did a verification with the employer that over last time minute, is, just before yeah. you cleared, yeah. a, or the, the, the underwriter would have letter. you yeah. caught it because you, you're very proactive. But the underwriters, and in some cases, if the loan officer isn't proactive, or they figure, well, I'll just I'll just push it through. Then the underwriter finds out. Then there's a big shock. And, Correct. And yeah, the, you can't so clear, clear the loan. Clear the loan. Yeah, that's why um, there's some in- intricacies in my job where you have to ask the right question. Yes. Yeah. And I guess a lot of it came with like through the years you try mm-hmm. try to remember you know sure. almost like you know court smith versus wade that loan you know yeah. you did this instead of this yeah. um so yeah absolutely yeah. so we spoke about the three the three pieces of the puzzle let's talk a little bit about the um, about the liabilities and what the liabilities how you look at the liabilities yeah. and let's talk about like car loans and, sure. and what and some things what not to do once you've once you've obtained the pre-approval letter. Yeah. So when I run credit, um, nowadays what we do is we run a soft pull of TransUnion up front um, just so um, you're not directly impacting the credit report. We run the hard pull once the offer gets accepted. But we do the soft pull up front. Um, We look at the liabilities. Most importantly, we look at the monthly payments. So if you have an auto lease, we have to count that no matter what. Even if you say, well, the lease is coming due in three months, it doesn't matter because we know that you're going to release another car. So we mm-hmm. always have to count the auto lease. Financing of a car, we count that. If you're under a certain amount of payments, uh, like, if, for example, if you're under 10 payments on mm-hmm. a automobile loan, we sometimes we can exclude that from the payment itself. Um, all revolving debt we have to count. Mm-hmm. We look at what the minimum score is. And nowadays, what's good with student loans is most student loans don't, they do report to the credit bureaus, but they don't record, uh, report a payment. If they don't report a payment, that usually means it's in deferment. Okay. We still have to count that against you. And there's a rule in place where we take the balance and we times it by 0.5% to dictate what the monthly payment's going to be towards debt ratio. Mm. Okay. Okay. Very, Yeah. And what about the debt to equity ratio? There's a certain there's a certain formula or certain ratio that you guys have as the benchmark. To, yeah. Uh, so for yeah. Fannie Mae, your conventional yeah. product, which is your cookie cutter product for yeah. most folks, um, we like to uh, well, we don't like to, but we can go up to forty nine point nine nine nine. And what does that represent? It represents your total liabilities, monthly payment wise, plus your proposed mortgage with principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, mm-hmm. divided by your gross monthly income, and it can't okay. exceed forty nine point nine. So FHA in- will allow you to go to fifty six point five. Interesting. Okay. The gross and income is after tax or before, before tax. Before tax. Before tax. Okay. okay, so that's yeah. pretty tax. generous. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. generous. Yeah. So different lenders yeah. could have different different. Uh, they could be more conservative if they want to be. But as they FHA, want to be, they, they have their overlays where they yeah. sometimes yeah. They, they, they. Okay, but roughly good. half the half yeah. of your uh, of your debt can be almost half of what your total gross uh, yeah, income gross is, income. which isn't bad. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then there's one caveat to that, which is self-employed borrowers, we don't go off the gross income. We have to go off their net income, net income. W- yeah. which is their line 31 on Schedule C after the okay. write-offs. Uh, we can add back in a couple things like depreciation and whatnot, but um, for the most part, we have to go take a two-year average of their net income. Wow. Yeah. If they're self-employed for five years or more, in most cases, we only need one year tax returns, so we don't need a two-year average. We'll go off the last year's wow. net income. Wow, this was really um, informative, yeah. very, yes. uh, very informative. Yeah. Uh, we are out of time, but once again, Joe, we want to thank you for being our guest today, and please give your uh, phone number again. 908-307-2374, and again, my email is J-U-R-C-I-U-O-L-I at Crown. HM.com. Thank you again, Joe. Please give Joe a call for any of your mortgage or refinancing needs. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Thank you.